Hey guys, it's Mr. Deep here and welcome back to another episode of the KMM social media app series. Today we are wrapping up our backend journey with the implementation of two crucial APIs, get followers and get followings. Now these APIs allow us to retrieve essential data about user followers and also the account they are following. Before we start coding, I want to let you know that I've already typed out the code for these APIs. Since the process remains the same and we've done this multiple times, I'll just be explaining the pre-typed code to ensure that we maximize our learning without unnecessary repetition. Alright, so with that being said, let's get started. Let's first start with get followers and get following. Now, usually we will start by defining the data access object. But here, as you can see, we already have the get followers and get following method. And we also provided implementations for both of them. Now, keep in mind that this method returns a list of long, which represent the user's IDs. Next, let's go inside the repository. Now here at follows repository interface, we need to add these two methods, the get followers and get following. Both of them are returning response of type get follows response. Now in the follows.kt, here we define our two models. We have the follows user data that has the ID, the name, the bio, the image URL, and also the information to know if the user is already following or not. And then we have the get follows response which has success, the list of follows if we could retrieve them and also a message in case something went wrong. After that, in the follows repository implementation, now here we will have the get followers and get following. First of all, we retrieve the followers IDs here in the get followers by calling followsDAO.getFollowers. Since get followers IDs just returns a list of users IDs, we need to get users rows. And for that, we will call userDAO.getUsers. Now, this is a new method that we are going to see in a moment that just returns list of users rows when we provide IDs. And after that, we convert the users rows, or in this case, we call them followers rows to followers. Now this is done by calling followers rows dot map. And here we first of all need to get this information is following. And for that one more time, we are going to call follow DAO dot is already following. And then we call the, the follow user data and this returns a follows user data. All right. So the get following also has the same process. We get the following IDs. We get users rows from those IDs and then we map the users rows to follow user data. If we open user toe to see how we implemented the get users method here, as you can see, we have this get users that takes in a list of IDs and then returns a list of user rows. In the user DAO implementation, we just query on the user table to select where the user ID is in this list of IDs. And then we return that mapping row to user. All right, guys, now next, as you can see here from our design, when a user is new to our application and hasn't followed anyone yet, on the home screen, we'll have to show this onboarding section that displays an horizontal scrolling list of profile that the user may want to follow. Now, this is a feature we haven't implemented yet, and we need to do that before we leave the backend. One more time, coming back inside follows repository interface, we need to add this method, get following suggestions that takes in a user ID and returns response of type get follows response. Now coming inside follows repository implementation for the get following suggestion method. Here we first of all need to know if the user has already followed someone. So for that, we are going to call followdow.getFollowing. So we try to retrieve a list of following and see if that is not empty. Then we will return by checking if the user has already some following, we will return a response.error. 
else, we are going to first of all need the suggested following rows. And for this, we're going to call userDAO.getPopularUsers. Now, this getPopularUsers is a method that you will see in a moment in the user DAO. Then we get a list of suggested following by first of all filtering to avoid return the current user row. So for that, we call suggested following rows that filter not and map the return result by passing the to follow user data method. And after that, we are going to return a response success. And for the data, we'll pass get follows response. Coming here inside user DAO, we need to add this get popular users that takes in a parameter limit at the number of users rows that we need to return. And the implementation for this can be found here inside user DAO implementation. We just select all order by the number of followers. So we'll order on user table dot followers count in descending order. All right. So I think that is for get following suggestions. So next we are going to open follows route to define the endpoint for this newly added functionality. Here inside follows routing extension function, we need to do a little bit of refactoring. First of all, we will put everything inside a common route that has this path forward slash follows. And then the second refactoring is that before we had this follow and unfollow action handled by the same endpoint we called follows. Now this time for clarity, I have separated them into two distinct endpoints. The first one is this post forward slash follow for the following action. And then for the unfollow action, we have another endpoint that has this path forward slash unfollow. Now this of course will require us to remove this field here, which helped us to determine if the action was to follow or to unfollow. Now, Coming back inside follows route.kt, we have the followers, the following and suggestions endpoint. This one is to get the followers. We will first of all get the user ID, the query parameter that will be passed. And then we take the page number and the page size. After that, we will define the result variable and call repository.getFollowers. And from what we get from the repository, we are going to respond, passing in the status as result.code and the message as result.theta. Now the following HTTP method on uh, this get following HTTP method, we first of all get the user ID, the page and the limit as query parameters. Then we call repository.getFollowing. We respond with what we get from the repository and then for errors, we'll catch bad request. If not, then we're going to catch any other uh, any other error and respond with internal server error. Finally, to get suggestions, here we just need the user ID query parameter and then call repository dot get following suggestions to which we need to pass the user ID and then respond with what we get from repository. All right, so now I think we can run and test our newly added APIs. All right, guys, now here I'm inside Postman. And as you can see, I have already defined these three new requests, get user followers request, and we have get following, I mean, get user following request. And lastly, get following suggestions. So as you can see here inside our database, we have three users, Ericsson with this ID, Mr. Deep and also Peter. Now let's first start by testing the get following suggestions. So for that, we're going to use the ID of Peter. You can see we have Peter ID. You'll see that Peter has these two users that are suggested for him to follow because Peter doesn't have any following. If you want to see that, we can copy this ID of Peter. And if we come here and paste that, you'll see that Peter has no following. That's why this get following suggestions returns two profiles because that's all we have in our database to suggest to Peter. All right, 
Now the get following also as you can see here for now it returns an empty list. Now if we make for example here open the follow user request if we take the ID of Peter and paste that here and make that Peter follows Ericsson let hit send sorry we need to <laughs> change uh, this endpoint this is not to unfollow but to follow and let hit send okay now here we are getting success true if we now go back inside get user following if we hit send you can see that this time you are getting one following now if we go back inside get following suggestions since Peter is now following someone this normally should tell us that Peter has already following. So for now we can be sure that this get following suggestion is working without a problem. And also as you have seen the get following uh, get user following request also is working. Now to get followers for a particular user here we have the Ericsson ID. Since Peter is following Ericsson this also should normally return as one follows. Now to verify if this is really working let's just take Mr. Deep who has no follower and if we paste the ID of Mr. Deep here you'll see that the return list is empty. So I think here the three endpoints are working. Alright guys and now before we stop the video if you pay closer attention to what we are doing so far with our APIs you will notice that whatever user token we pass to any of our request endpoint it just works right now the reason for this is that i wanted our apis to be easy to test and not request a correct token each time that we want to access a resource on our backend but this is a serious security issue because it means that whoever has a correct token generated by our application can access any resources in our backend let's get inside intellij and you'll see what i mean by this Right, guys I need you to open a security.kt file under the plugins package. Now here as you can see in the validate block we are checking to see if the payload.getClaim as string is different of null. We are trying to make sure that we got a payload that has a claim. Now this claim is the user email that we use to sign a new token. As you can see here we are signing with this claim. Now in this validate block whenever we return this JWT principle it means that we have validated that this claim is correct. In other words this email is registered in our database and when we return null it means that we could not validate uh, credentials from this JWT token and this is particularly important if we want to do further validation for the user to have access to some resources. Now just checking if we have got a claim doesn't mean that this is a correct user that has required uh, authorization to access some resources. Now here is how we should uh, do this. So from here what you can see is that we first of all get uh, this user DAO. We inject that inside configure security extension function. Now for the validate block here as you can see inside this if where we check if the payload.claim is different of null we also want to make sure that this user with this email actually exists in our database and for that we'll make use of userdao.findbyemail and we'll pass that claim and after that we want to see uh, we want to make sure that this user belongs to the correct audience and for that we will call credential.payload.audience and check to make sure that the JWT audience we signed this token actually is contained in this audience from the payload. Now this is particularly important if you have uh, multiple audiences for uh, multiple users. For example in an app you could have a manager. The manager will have access to some resources that regular employees will not have access to. And then after that we are going to check if the user exists and it's a valid audience for this user. In that case, we're going to return a JWT principle. When handling the request inside our route, we will have access to this JWT principle to do further validation. For example, you could change this claim to sign the user token using the user ID instead of the user email. 
because when you have access to this JWT principle in the route, you can check to make sure that, for example, the user that tries to edit a profile has the right permission to do so. It's not every user inside our database that can modify information for any other user, right? So you'll have access to this JWT principle that you can use to do further validation. All right, so now if we run this app, when you come here inside Postman, let's test this get user following request. Now, as you can see, here we are using a token that for a user that we created in previous videos. This should not work because this is not a correct token for this user. So he will not have access. As you can see here, we're getting this message. Token is invalid or has expired. So this is, I think, uh, the profile for Mr. Deep. Let's check that. Now, this is the profile for Peter. Now, if we copy Peter, uh, peter at gmail.com. So let's quickly open the login. Now here we need to change from Mr. Deep to, oh, let's just here try to log in with Mr. Deep and we'll get the token for Mr. Deep. We need to copy this token. Now, if we come now here for the suggested uh, user, we are going to pass the token of Mr. Deep and also make sure that we pass the ID of Mr. Deep. There we go. Now, if we hit send, you can see that we are getting now a success response, even though the follows list is empty. All right, so I think that's it for this video. Now we have done everything that we plan to do. So for the upcoming videos, we will be on the Android side and try to implement what we have from the backend. So as for now, take care and I will see you in the next video. Bye.